happy to share this afternoon to participate in this uh, workshop and uh, I start with uh, a spirit of appreciation for your efforts that you have been responsible for making uh, arrangements for all this which is a need which is a need of the hour in my country at least because of various reasons one among them is illiteracy and poverty we find most of the common type of crimes are committed in the you know at least in cities and larger the city larger the number of crimes committed by those people who are downtrodden who suffer from one or the other disability who are not able to fend for themselves necessity drives them to the life of crime and correspondingly we have a very dismal picture of their defense most of them are not in a position to defend themselves and the act which has been brought is inspired by article 39 i believe a of the constitution of india where in legal aid has been made a subject of state responsibility and it is on the basis of that that you people are all engaged in rendering services to that class of the society which is deprived crime may not be their passion crime may not be their profession crime in most of such cases is committed by necessity economic need they have no better avenues to earn their livelihood and they commit the crime but the state has stepped into that and has provided the act under which the three tiers of that is perhaps the first is the national legal aid the other is the state the third is the district now they are doing very good service but because of their limitations and uh, temptations in the profession are too many we are really not able to draw selfless trained very well placed lawyers to render the services to the legal aid society unfortunately it is considered as a pastime or a fill gap arrangement for those young members of the profession who wish to learn and take up the briefs through the legal aid societies and uh, well do whatever to the best of their ability they are able to do and it is with that purpose that this workshop has been arranged i am very grateful that you have thought that i can pass on some tips or uh, certain things which can be useful in the matter of their day to day performance one workshop may not be sufficient one hour or 45 minutes lecture by kk sood and for that reason any one of my colleagues may not be sufficient for you because yours is a profession in which i have been there for last 52 years and today also i consider myself a student and i keep on reading and learning so yours is a profession which is learning as much as as long as you have patience and you live and you stick to this profession but young brothers and sisters who are from the bar i have one thing to tell you please do not hesitate and do not be discouraged keep on working for one reason there is one very good hope that is if you sustain yourself 
then perhaps this is the profession which does not have any limitations. It is one of the most respectable, most profitable profession. It has immense returns if you are able to sustain and stick to it and work hard. There is not far when I can predict for each one of you a day much glorious than even me and for that reason those who are ahead of me or above me. Returns are immense. You have got an opportunity to learn. Don't think that you are doing some obligation. This obligation is towards the society. The society where from you have learned La, La has given you the opportunity to serve the, your countrymen. Please do it with sincerity, with passion. Now, general talk is over. The subject given to me is with regard to admissibility of evidence obtained during trial. I was wondering that this subject seems to be some problem which has been faced by the lawyers from the legal aid and they might be wanting they might be wanting some light to be to be thrown that the evidence which is required to be led at the trial is not the only evidence which is contained in your 173 CRPC report, which we in common parlance call charge sheet, or sometimes we call it a chalan. Chalan is a vernacular Urdu word rather. Charge sheet is the English word. But take it as this, a police report, which culminates into a final report after the completion of the investigation. Those who re remember or who do not now remember immediately, when go back to your office, kindly have a look at section 173 and all its subclasses. Each class from A to G has got a significance. It is a format provided by the state government. More or less, it has remained for last more than 100 years. And those people who have got the experience of work on the criminal side, they will bear me out on this, that with each charge sheet, you get not only the summary of the case as being put before the court, after the completion of investigation, rather you get the list of witnesses which are required to be produced in support of the case in the court. Then you have got another list, list of documents which are relied upon by the prosecution, which will be adduced in evidence in the course of the trial. Now, this I said to you that that 173 report confining it only to list of witnesses and the list of documents to be produced is the outer limit of the scope of the trial. But that is not the end. The topic admissibility of evidence obtained during trial the charge sheet is over with the filing. Filing of the charge sheet, the entire evidence which is relied upon is over. Now assuming there are instances and the code of criminal procedure is not silent about it. I was taken aback on reading this topic that I thought of, well, there are categories of evidence which comes into existence, which surfaces after the charge sheet is filed and the trial commences. 
and when that trial commences, the evidence which is on the face of it, strictly speaking, apparent, extend to us to 173 report. 173 report is not Bible. It is not required to be completely st stuck to in the interest of justice if some other evidence is coming forth. And any evidence and all evidence which is required to be produced has got to meet the test of admissibility. Not only one test, but there is always another test. Can you get me a glass of water? Sure. The second test for that is that it should have relevance. Relevant to the fact in issue, all those who remember section 3 to 5 of the Evidence Act, you will find these expressions. Fact in issue. Issue. Now, the two tests must be met before any piece of evidence, whether it is collected during trial or collected after the commencement of the trial. It has to meet that. So it wasn't too happily worded. With all respects, whoever drafted this, I am saying it ought to have been differently worded. Excuse me. Now I have tried to tell you on the basis of this that there is at least I have penned down in my short note four categories of the evidence which can be dug, searched and required to be adduced in the course of the trial. I am sure each one of you, even those who are absolutely freshers from the college, would remember that there is something called an approver. Approver's evidence is something which in majority of cases surfaces only after the charge sheet is filed in the court. There are cases where pardon is granted to an accomplice. Accomplice is a person who is himself an accessory to the commission of the crime. He is a person who participates in the commission of the crime with the other accused. But during the course of investigation it is found that the prosecution doesn't have very strong evidence. There are five or six accused. One out of them who can throw light on the case if granted pardon. He should be made a witness. But if he is given a pardon and from being an accused, he is given the status or a position in law of being an approver. That is, I don't know uh, how many of you would know that word, Sultani Gaba. That is, Sultan means, Sultan to pata hoga. Basha. King. Queen. Empress. You must be reading the old law. Citation or King versus so and so. Emperor versus so and so. Empress versus so and so. Khwaza Nazir Ahmed versus Emperor. So it is the state personified in the institution of the kingship, wherever it is. Or where it is not there, then it is like ours, state. State of Delhi, state of Maharashtra, so and so on. Now he becomes the witness of the state. Sultan ke gawa ban gaye. Unko mafi mil gaye. Jurum tumne kiya hai. And that is called 
grant of pardon to a an accomplice in the crime with a promise that he will truthfully make disclosure of each fact and would not commit any treachery with the state with the court by deviating from his statement and thereby earn the you know pardon save himself and yet defeat the cause of justice so such a witness we need not today go into the details the section says is liable to be prosecuted on the basis of a certificate being given by the court that here is a witness who was granted pardon he has betrayed he has perjured or he has not stuck to the conditions of the grant and as such he is liable to be prosecuted he will be liable to be prosecuted as a main accused as this like he stood the part he stood the you know position before grant of pardon and in addition to that can also and normally he does get being uh, is prosecuted for committing perjury so now coming to this that how then mr sood you have given the example of pardon being given in the course of the investigation but we normally forget about it that the same section talks of after the charge sheet is filed then the prosecution thinks well maybe on the basis of legal advice or maybe some other reasons i will not go into that today any time any one of you has a problem you can come and sit with me i'll give you the you know special uh, treatment on that uh, subject the charge sheet having been filed without the statement of an approver without grant of pardon to a accused but that person is granted pardon by the trial court mostly it happens in cbi cases or it happens in very very serious offenses then that person's statement is recorded by the magistrate if it is a session trial that statement will be sent along with the charge sheet to the sessions court he will be once again examined by the sessions court before the evidence for the against the accused starts so that is the category of evidence which is available after the filing of the charge sheet that is after the stage of investigation is over now the topic was evidence obtained during trial so the approver's evidence is mostly obtained after the charge sheet during the course of the trial now that evidence is as good evidence as any other witness's evidence no taint no other thing, except a guideline provided by the section 133 that an accomplice is ordinarily not to be believed unless corroborated that's that because he remains a person suspect and obviously also see till yesterday that person was an accused but he is fortunate enough he is lucky that the states benevolence has fallen on him out of 5 or 6 co-accused he has been picked up as one considered reliable to be trusted and hence the pardon is being granted and the court is persuaded to accept his plea and he from an accused he becomes a witness so his credentials as we cred you know question the witnesses with regard to their character he does answer that character kal tak to jo mulzam tha aaj wo gawah ban gaya uske gawahi ki kitni value hai it is tainted and hence the wisdom rule of evidence incorporated in section 133 he is unfit for being relied upon 
sole testimony of a you know accomplice will not be sufficient for conviction but that doesn't mean that evidence is not admissible the evidence so obtained by grant of pardon on the request of the prosecution by the court statement having been recorded does not become denuded from being treated as piece of evidence its evidentiary value may be weaker than the other evidence so this is one category of evidence which comes into existence after the charge sheet is filed <coughs> it is only dealt by me in five lines in para 1 of my note now the other instructions which i will give you so this all is that don't think that your job is confined by the contours of section 173 the other category is say for instance the charge sheet has been filed keeping in view that the 60 or 90 days of judicial custody of a person in jail is going to expire and the investigation is not yet complete in certain respects if the charge sheet is not filed before the expiry of that statutory period <coughs> as the case may be in some cases it is 60 days you know in the other cases where life sentence is prescribed is 90 days if the charge sheet is not filed within that stipulated period then the accused gets a right of grant of bail what bail which bail statutory bail bail by default this is very good very good i am glad so bail by default it will be disastrous sometimes for witnesses from the angle of the society that in such a serious case a person has been able to get bail merely on account of non completion of the investigation within the stipulated period as the case may be 60 or 90 days so the police feels compelled by legal considerations to file the charge sheet so that he doesn't get a right to ask for bail by default but in such cases you come across all those who have to their memory subsection 8 of section 173 please on my request go home after you have enjoyed your uh, sumptuous lunch those who are carrying their book with them just before you go for a bite for lunch you check up section subsection 8 which permits the filing of an incomplete charge sheet 17388 in my note i have reproduced this so that you are immediately able to look at but kindly see one thing at times this is not the only reason to file an incomplete charge sheet you have been reading quite a lot of uh, debate going on in the press in respect of 2g and the effort made by mr subramaniam swami on the question of grant of sanction for prosecution where it is needed the experience is one of the subjects dealt with that judgment <coughs> that judgment uh, is very very voluminous but it is a treasure of procedural law on the question of sanction please find time to read it and unless you finish do not put it in your shelf keep it on your table keep it on your bed as and when you get time read couple of pages thereafter fold the page up to which you have read it but i want you to promise me that you have gone through the whole of it don't ask me the question i have not been able to read it wholly 
I have skipped over several pages and I have folded the page in between on the corner. Because now the point for you is different. You are at the threshold of learning. All that you learn today is going to be your treasure for the whole of your life you are in the profession. While I am a withering man, I may be there in profession for another year or two or five years even. Who knows where there is a call from the God. Right. Now the point is that the sanction is awaited. I am coming back to I have not forgotten what I was telling you. Sanction is awaited. The authority competent to grant sanction for filing the prosecution. In the light of section 197 of the CRPC. You know that section where sanction is required for launching prosecution. That no court shall take cognizance of such offenses against a public servant who has committed the offense and so on and so forth. <coughs> so the sanction is applied for, it has not been granted, we file the charge. Sanction is of coming later. Sanction, once the sanction is granted, all the evidence in relation to the sanction will be material evidence and will be the basis for successful prosecution. Otherwise, man can be acquitted. He cannot be tried without sanction. So, this is another category of evidence coming into existence. After the cognizance is taken, after the charge sheet has been filed and the trial has commenced. <coughs> <coughs> Say for sometimes in cases, CFSL results are awaited. Police has done its job of sending it to the CFSL. You may call it FSL, you may call it CFSL. <coughs> Sorry. The laboratories are full. They take their own time. Certain tests are very cumbersome. They take, you know, a couple of days. One test it takes a couple of days. So, the, the public clamor is there. There are various kinds of compulsions and pressures on the police investigating offenses to put the case into the court room. Otherwise, media also creates, you know, psyche against the investigating agencies. As Prosecution to Shuruni Hui. Kyamazake. Today, in order to be, show their accountability to the public, to the you know, masses, they are compelled to file the charge sheet without the necessary evidence coming forth, which is expected it will come in due course. So that is the third category. The second category. But the limb of the second. Then you have certain sections with which you are very, very familiar. Then section 311. <coughs> it's normally said that court witnesses are examined under section 311. But one thing which is relevant for the topic of day is this, that some evidence is considered during the course of trial that this is very necessary, it ought to have been included. It has not been done. Maybe for dishonest reasons, maybe for genuine mistake, <coughs> which we call, we may call revisionness of investigation. Not much farsightedness on the part of the investigating officer. So he has committed a mistake in not including such a witness in the list of witnesses. Or at times, his wisdom has not <coughs> persuaded him to cite him as a witness, though such a person has been examined during investigation, he has been interrogated, but not cited as a witness. The court, in the course of cross-examination, done by any lawyer like you people who are very well informed, has elicited from the investigating officer 
that look you had examined mr x and y also kindly look up your case diary they are the most natural witnesses and they were present you have examined them he says give me opportunity to refresh my memory i am using the technical language which you are required to remember i want to refresh my memory he looks to the case diary which you call as cds not the cds which you are getting this is the file of the investigation so you he sees this he gives an answer <coughs> court has every right at that very time or later to check up the correctness of what has been stated by that person and recorded in the case diary and what has been the question put by the defense counsel what is the reply then the court has to make up its mind whether to summon him as a witness or not and to examine such a witness can be examined it is also the type of case with which we are dealt with during the evidence during the investigation has come into existence or to the notice of the court <coughs> such witnesses can be even summoned by the party such witnesses can even be summoned by the court the only qualification for such a witness is to be examined is that is their evidence must appear to the court to the judicial mind that it is essential in the interest of justice or the language of the section for just decision of the case then such a witness will be summoned by the court now here i am entering a caveat the same thing could be done by the party also if it is done by the party it doesn't mean a court witness if the court summons suo moto then he becomes a court witness that is the only difference the other difference will be he is a witness who is very material for the result of the trial but the rights of cross examination precedence in cross examination is slightly regulated by practice you will not find it in the section <coughs> the practice is that such a witness if is summoned by the party would be cross examined first by the opposite then it may also be cross examined or further examined elucidation by re examination by the party at whose behest the witness was summoned but you cannot term that witness as a partisan witness remember for which you have to be very very careful please go to the law books read the commentary under section 311 remember them i have given two three judgments in my note but they are just you know short of time not knowing the scope of my address or that i would be in a position to extend my yes. you know absolutely you can continue i can continue no no not till evening ha now you you will kindly see so just refresh yourself <coughs> this this part is not over only with 311 please remember those who are taking a note they will also take a note of section 391 analogous power as is available under 311 to the trial court be it a magistrate or a sessions court we have abolished the original jurisdiction in criminal matters of the high court we don't have it used to be there under the 89 code you may be sometimes reading that in english uh, system they are yet maintaining the powers of the high court for trial but in appeal appellate court whether it is sessions or it is high court in cases of life sentence in cases which are tried by the sessions the appeal goes to the high court so this 391 is reserved for the appellate court 
391 parabateria section 311 guidelines are practically the same is it essential for the just decision of the case such evidence will be admissible and will be admitted by the appellate court and like any other evidence its effect will be duly considered now you will be troubled by me on another subject which from my point of view is more important for the day the effort which we are <coughs> dealing with the role of legal aid lawyers and jail visiting advocates I saw Mrs. Uh, Asha Menon here, <coughs> the only judicial officer I could know. But we have none of the judicial officers present here, <coughs> so your workshop is incomplete. Very I take the liberty. I take the liberty of pointing out this. This kind of uh, workshop. are not meant for a show that we are doing a lot to serve the objects of the act and we are very very serious and sanguine about fulfilling the obligations of the state as and we said by article 39a i believe anyone having a constitution equated to the chapter of fundamental rights by the provisions dealing with directive principles but it is either a show or only a lip sympathy if we do not give importance to the object and efforts to fulfill those objects i really do not know till today because it was not there when i started way back in 1960 i thought i would not tell you but by habit i am driven to make confessions i came in the profession in 1960 first july 1960 we had no legal aids we had no concept of amicus amicus nobody was there but don't think that this legal aid our institution of amicus curiae is only meant for giving you state charities treat it as a good experience experience for learning instead of getting frustrated remaining idle the state in its wisdom hoping expecting that you will do your best is entrusting you with the task of defending those who need your services much more than those persons who can engage kk sud or dinesh mathur or ramesh gupta or for that reason any important criminal lawyer so you have got a moral as also a necessity by your being a beginner in the profession that you are interested that 
सो प्लीज दिस शुड ऑलवेज गाइड यू इन योर कॉन्शियंस दैट वॉट इज योर रोल इज समथिंग मच मोर रिस्पॉन्सिबल मच मोर सीरियस दैन वॉट के के सूद वुड डू यू कैन पुश इज क्लाइंट आउटसाइड the door and say go better i have no time please go i can't afford you can't afford my fee i can't afford you you go but while you have got a devotional attitude because you are at the threshold and this is your bedrock so from here a question comes which compelled me or impelled me to ask from you is any officer judicial officer concerned with the working of this system this institution is present here because i have a message for them <coughs> what are the rates which are being paid it is 12000 in case of a session court which are paid in three stages and the pitiers of them well i would not i would not be able to either help you nor i would like to know the <laughs> but i would certainly like to use this platform and the the occasion to convey to the authorities concerned that in order to get real justice and effort made by the beginners to make this system a success and render the really good service is by providing them economic incentive that's what i wanted to convey but i am at a disadvantage that they are not there but nevertheless whoever is you know preparing the note of the success or working of this workshop three days you are spending you will formulate the view points given by this various speakers please put a note to the authorities concerned that these are the views of voiced then the second thing would be there is an expression that sometimes you know it is used for offices i am guilty at one point of time i said when i was invited to participate in a seminar in nanital by advocates on records association that the system of appointment of judges should be more transparent and it should be properly rationalized and uh, made blah 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 i was very hurt because every speaker who preceded me three four speakers preceded me they were using very very cautious language and they were not uh, trying to say anything which this you know was disappointing to the judicial fraternity and uh, even the state machinery executive so i felt very bad except justice hagde who spoke after me others also spoke nobody agreed with me i used one expression that the judgeship these days goes a begging little difficult uh, expression but this is an expression which is used goes a begging now have you understood no sir no something you go and beg for it and you get it i said the judgeship is these days is given on begging goes a begging so don't do that and if it is so authority should consider what are the criteria to select a lawyer to be interested with these cases at least he does need some remuneration that is one aspect which should be addressed by the authorities concerned the akin subject is there must be a study of the difficulties and con- contractions with which they are suffering so far as their working is concerned that will equally apply to the lawyers 
who are on the panel of visiting the jail to give advice to the under trials, to meet them, to understand their difficulties, and to take steps for redressal by making some application either to the court or to the police. It may be with regard to the defense, it may be with regard to the difficulties in the family, all that. It has to be very, very <coughs> seriously thought about and various things have to, are required to be done. I do not know what allowances are being given to those lawyers who are regularly visiting the jail. It's better not to enlist the lawyers for these purposes unless they are paid because this is going to build frustration in them. We must see that they are not frustrated. They do not start hating the profession. They do not quit it in disgust. I read the biography of Sir Shadilal. You have heard the name? In British times, he is the one first Indian judge who reached the House of Lords as a judge. He was knighted with the title of Sar Shadi Lal. He says, now this is meant for all of you. He says, I come came from a very rich family. I had a burning fire in me to become a lawyer as my father had for me. And he says when I went to the court, I got my seat. Any one of you has been to the Mufassal town? <coughs> Have you been to Yes, sir. Not hold. But he can, uh, now I don't know. Now very few shanties are there. But when I was practicing, I started from Tisjari. By the side of the wall of the treasury, we used to bake our sheds. Huh? And we used, still there. And we used to. So the fossil course. If you go for that reason today also to small towns in Punjab, Haryana or UP, you will find the same position. Chappad jugiyo ke tarhe lagai huye hai, wahi baiti hai makil. Usko kaya tarhe basta. To baste bhi bhai. No court, 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 district court mein ye nizara dekhne ko zyada milta hai. He says, well, I did not get a brief for quite a good number of months. And if I got a brief, I did not get the fee. Why? Oh, Shadilal, who is son of our state, come on, let's oblige him. Beta, ye jara notice de dena. Beta, jara ye batao, humara ye case hai, land revenue mein hum yaha aar gaye, yaha jeetna chate hai. Woh vakil batao. No, you are right. But I was a little bit of a pun. 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 I was a little bit तो कहता है अब इसी दो रुपए दे देंगे आठ आने दे देंगे ये तो गुड ओल्ड डेज दैट आई एंगेज ए क्लार्क दैट क्लार्क मेनी ए टाइम्स वुड ब्रिंग द केस फॉर मी एंड वुड टेल मी सर वे केस ले लो 20 रुपए फीस देगा ये उस गांव का नंबरदार है और इसका केस आप करोगे तो केस ही केस लाइन लग जाएगी कहता केस ले लो कहता पर उसको आप 20 रुपए में से 5 रुपए दे दो 
वो है ये तो नहीं करूंगा मैं ही डिड नॉट एक्सेप्ट ए ब्रीफ थ्रू दिट आउट फॉर ए पीरियड ऑफ सिक्स मंथ ही रिमेन तो क्लार्क वॉज वेरी मच यू नो प्रोटर्ड ओवर दिस मैं वो मर जाऊंगा जितनी मेरी तनख्वाह होती है डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट में उससे ज्यादा उनके मिसलेनियस चार्जेस हो जाते हैं क्लाइंट से पैसे ले लेते हैं ये ले लेते हैं वो ले लेते हैं तो मुंशी उसके मैं भूखा मर जाऊंगा कहता देखो तुम्हें तनख्वाह पहली के पहले मिल जाती मिलेगी और पांच रुपए फालतू ले लो छोड़ को इनमें जाओ जाना है तो चुप चुप तो मैं ये कहता हूं कि पैसे की वजह से नहीं छोड़ना तो अमीर आदमी का बेटा था सक्सीडेड इन गेटिंग द ब्रीफ स्लोली एंड स्लोली एंड वन डे ही बिकेम दी वेरी वेल सॉफ्ट लॉयर अप टू दिवी काउंसिल ही वेंट आर गोइंग केसेस ही वॉज सिलेक्टेड टू बी ए जज बेट जज इन लाहौर हाई कोर्ट एंड देर फ्रॉम ही वॉज टेकन टू दिवी काउंसिल सो वट आई एम सेंग इज दैट to see that you are not frustrated about the profession you have to sustain perseverance patience has to be there those who come to munshi se hisa doubt se hisa wo unka apna faisla hai but main ye kahunga please sustain yourself one way or the other in fact this is a profession which was reserved for the elite class of the society look to the past history of the lawyers count the names they were all children from those families who were fortunate raiso ke bacche wakalat ke profession mein aate the ab to mere jaise aane lage ha ji to mera kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke authorities should consider how to generate funds and how to pass it on to those lawyers who undertake this job they should be encouraged to accept it increasingly and do sincerely the effort to help the state in achieving the object of the act that's one thing while this will not provide you an opportunity of gaining experience and one day you will become as good a lawyer if not better as k k sud मैनी में इवन एक्सेल के किस एंड फॉर दिस रीजन वाइडर पार्टिसिपेशन इन द वर्कशॉप लाइक दिस विच शुड बी मोर फ्रीक्वेंट एंड द अथॉरिटीज कंसर्न शुड एब्सॉर्व दम सेल्स दे शुड नो योर व्यूज दे शुड ट्राई टू इंप्रूव अपॉन द वर्किंग एंड फंक्शनिंग rather than a lip service getting salutations giving a lecture opening very dictatory and then disappearing that's that doesn't really serve the purpose i i wanted i could convey it to the judges but they are not there one thing which i am again at pain and i am keeping it is reserved for some time some kind of check on the undeserved patronage of lawyers for entrustment of the work by the legal aid or by way of amicus i have had the examples of certain judgments being seen by me in which the either the legal aid lawyers or the amicus were interested with the work and the courts thought ye to khana puri kar rahe hain lagao lawyers have put questions which are damaging and the judge has not stepped in silent spectator which he did not he thinks that if i participate in the adjudicatory system then perhaps my rate of disposal will be lesser 
and I will not be able to give requisite number of units every month. Number two, I will be saved the botheration of analytically appreciating the evidence and quickly churn out a judgment saying PW1 has stated on oath, 2 has stated on oath, so and so on oath as if those people who come and commit perjury, they don't speak on oath. <laughs> there are witnesses who commit perjury. They also take oath and they start speaking and you say, well, he has perjured. He has made a false statement. He is guilty. So, in every sentence you will find. PWX stated on oath. Why is that stated on oath? And therefore, in four pages, the entire evidence is reproduced and conclusions are there is no real defense, there is no challenge and the case of the prosecution is proved beyond reasonable doubt, hence I convict him. Now he wants to give the reward. Then the 235 says he is hearing on the sentence. Sentence pe kya kehna hai, Vakil sahab, bolo. So, tumne kya kehna hai, mahi likhtunga. So, on the question of sentence, he says, I am taking the lenient view because he was not uh, adequately defended. This and that, but nevertheless, I must put on record the hard work done by the Americas and uh, the person is given instead of seven years, four years, five years. Yeah. So, there has to be a check with regard to unwarranted patronization of the lawyers, be it through the legal aid, what is this long name, DLS it? <laughs> or as amicus. Really try to find out such lawyers, budding lawyers, who are in a position to put work come prepared and discharge their pious obligation towards the citizen who has trusted in you, trusted you to help him to come out of the shackles in which he is. Something has to be done. Workshop really should be aimed on that. This is my humble message to the presiding officers. Whoever, you know, goes more often to the courtroom or to the chamber of the judge is able to get more briefs. I am told, I do not know. I never uh, went through this experience, fortunately. Another thing which I would last, I would like to add for the organizers which again are missing. Kindly convey to them to solicit the cooperation of notable lawyers in the profession to experience, to share their experiences and join such workshops to really enrich your knowledge and share with you the tires of law subject-wise. As Justice Mehta was pointing out, Presumptions. Please have one topic. He gave an example of ex circumstantial evidence. What is very important for you people is understanding of law contained in section 161, 162. 
of the code of criminal procedure 164 confessions 154 of the crpc 157 of the crpc what is the importance of statutory safeguards provided in these sections how to get over and how to use it something which lawyers even of 20 to 30 years standing at the bar feel the need of consulting the case law i do it more often on the question of confrontation in the cross examination with the earlier statements that is section 145 and 154 of the evidence act so choose such subjects one day's workshop on this select a couple of senior lawyers who can really be your teachers and can deal with the subject and like moot courts you can also expect participation from the young lawyers that is another way of making them learn push them in the deep water waters he will start struggling he will learn swimming quicker call him call any one of you to come and participate and share the dais with kk sud on that subject and what others feel next time you will find more better participation from among the junior lawyers coming forward how do we make this workshop a success and a good experience of learning is something much is desired to be done and more constructive well i don't disagree with you now this is all that what i have said is not the total i mean i have given you according to my understanding few instances but this is not the end that's not the final thing now with this with my profound thanks to all of you for having been rapt attention to hear my boring speech which of course was not at all well prepared and not wishing to stand in your way for the next agenda item that is the lunch i thankfully i thankfully i thankfully wish that uh, whatever has been said by me is given a fair trial ek hafte mein ek hafte mein ek chapter ke andar ek section ko samajh lo aur us pe mastery gain kar lo to 10 din mein 10 chapter 10 ki 10 section hai ya 12 section hai wo unko pad lena to ab usse specific sawal poocho main jawab dunga jitni meri samajh hogi uske mutabik but i am i am i was wrong in understanding that you are talking about a very very important section that is section 10 of the evidence act that deals with the conspiracy and for that purpose i just wanted to tell you that perhaps you have got a grievance with regard to improper appreciation and understanding of section 10 for which i wanted to tell you please rajiv gandhi's assassination case reported as nalini versus the state you please read that and give greater attention to paras after 186 in the judgment of justice dp vadwa you will find an answer when there so i think it is 196 para which says that section 10 is used for player by the investigators and courts do not get into that jo kahi kuch nahi bana baat bane criminal conspiracy laga do banda mar gaya wo koi nahi interfere karta to aise sections jo hain 
they are very necessary they are good but they are misused more section 34 ipc common intention aap ek judgment badi mushkil se milegi main apne register mein to dhoond ke agli baar aaunga to de dunga wo kehte hain ki this section is more abused than used section 34 is more abused than being properly used draw their attention to what suits you and what is your understanding about a particular provision of law but they have got an obsession their obsession is you know caused by section 165 and 167 of the evidence act aapko ek main light si baat puchta hu mujhe ye bata do kabhi trial ke course mein koi vakil koi aadmi aisa behuda sawal puch sakta hai जो उसको पता हो कि ये बिल्कुल बेवकूफी का सवाल है ये इरेलीवेंट है इसका कोई मतलब ही नहीं है कोई पूछ सकता है हाँ एक आदमी पूछ सकता है ना 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 एक आदमी वे एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द कोर्ट रूम एक आदमी जज ये ये मेरी लास्ट ये मेरी लास्ट वो है हाँ हाँ चलते ये मेरी एक मिनट एक मिनट बस ये मेरी एक लास्ट वो है 165 सिक्सटी फाइव ऑफ एविडेंस है दी जज में इन ऑर्डर टू टू डिस्कवर वो ये डिस्कवर को तो भूल जाते हैं आर टू ऑबटेन प्रॉपर प्रूफ ऑफ रेलिवेंट फैक्ट वो ये कहते हैं ये तो तुम दोनों पार्टियों के लिए है दाएं और बाएं जो खड़े हैं आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन ये कहते हैं हमारे मतलब क्या है आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन ही प्लीज इन एनी फॉर्म एट एनी टाइम ऑफ एनी विटनेस अबाउट एनी फैक्ट रेलिवेंट नो एम्फोसिस अगला लफ्ज जो है उस पर एफेसिस और इरेलीवेंट बोलो ये पढ़ लेना तो उनको ये याद है कि हमारी पावर वहां तक जाती है जहां कोई आदमी अकल वाला पढ़ा लिखा कोर्ट में नहीं करेगा हम कर सकते हैं और वो क्यों करते हैं एक सेकंड और वो क्यों करते हैं क्योंकि 167 आगे क्या कहती है कि ऐसे सवाल पूछकर आपने लिख लिया इस बेसिस पे आपने मिस कैरेज ऑफ जस्टिस कर दी तो वन सिक्सटी सेवन कहती है इट विल नॉट बी ए गुड ग्राउंड टू अपसेट दैट जजमेंट वो कहते हैं कुछ नहीं कर सकते तुम मिस्टर सूद ये मेरा राइट है सवाल पूछने का वेल विद दिस ऑल यू नो आई थैंक यू वंस ओवर अगेन